Greetings everyone, I am Enraged Eggplant and welcome to Dungeons and Gerbs. In this video I will tell you how I make D&D druids in Gerbs. I might sound like a broken record here, but while I really like the concept of the D&D druid, I did not really like the implementation. The druid didn't really feel very druidic to me. Fortunately, Gerbs allows me to do whatever I want. First thing that should be talked about is druidic magic. Druids are divine spellcasters in D&D. It doesn't really make much sense to me. GURPS, however, has a pre-made nature power modifier that allows us to create an entire magic subtype, nature magic. Unlike most power modifiers, the nature power modifier is worth minus 20%. While it looks like a nice discount, the limitations imposed by this power modifier are quite harsh. First, you take a penalty to your casting rolls or ability effectiveness based on the highest TL of items worn. That means that to utilize your druidic powers at their maximum power, you'd have to rely on TL0 items. In terms of weapons, it limits you to axes, bows, simple maces, sticks, spears, staves and primitive knives. This is actually not that bad, as there's plenty of good TL0 weapons out there. The best TL0 armor, however, gives you only DR4. The second part of the power modifier is a mundane insulator. Nature powers work worse in polluted natural areas or urban settings. You're at minus one to use your abilities in a dispoiled wild place, such as a clear-cut forest, minus 3 in a city, minus 5 amidst ordinary pollution, and minus 10 in a poisoned wasteland. In most adventures, where the party visits both urban and wilderness areas, the nature power modifier usually averages in a penalty. If you are not ok with that, consider using the revised penalty range that can be found on page 31 of Pyramid 368. One of the things that can be annoying is that this sliding penalty may require you to recalculate effects of your abilities quite often. Of course, I would base druidic spellcasting on sorcery, but the fact that the nature power modifier is not worth minus 10% complicates things. The magical minus 10% power modifier is baked into the sorcerer's empowerment advantage, so we will have to replace it with nature minus 20% and add plus 10% worth of enhancements to keep the cost the same. I have found nothing better than two levels of reliable. This will give a plus two bonus to rolls made for hardcore improvisation. By the way, hardcore improvisation should use religious ritual, druidic, instead of thaumatology. The same skill can be used by the druids to link up on combining powers. Just like for most other spellcasting traditions, I require druids to take somatic, verbal and or material components for their spells, and allow them to vary casting times and costs. For critical failures, use the Celtic table from page 256 of Gerb's Thaumatology. The druid must have a thematically limited spell repertoire. If you watch my video on arcane magic, you might remember that I forbid arcane spellcasters from learning many spells that are appropriate to druids. The druidic scope is roughly equivalent to six colleges – air, animal, earth, plant, water and weather. Since the colleges of air, water and weather have significant overlaps, I think it is fair to consider this selection of spells as equivalent to four colleges applying a minus 10% limitation to sorcerer's empowerment. This works for a generic druid, but druids can be different. For example, druids of the circle of the cave might only have access to animal, fungus, earth and water spells. That's quite different from the surface dwelling druids. Druids of the circle of the moon might be limited to only animal spells and druids of the circle of wildfire might be limited to fire and plant spells. As you can see, there's plenty of possible variations. Aside from spellcasting, druids have some other abilities that make them stand out. What I like the most 
was the unique druidic language. I always found it fascinating that you might find some scribbles on a random tree or rock in the woods written by another druid and decipher them. To keep this language secret, all druids must also take vow, never teach druidic to non-druids as a quirk. Speaking of vows, remember the taboo to wear metal armor and wield metal weapons? In my opinion, it is mostly covered by the power modifier in GURPS, as there is not a lot of metal items available at TL0. But if you want to capitalize on it, consider taking this taboo as a minus 5 point vow. Animal companions are easy, this is just a constantly available ally. Check out GURPS Dungeon Fantasy V Allies for some example. Nature Sense sounds just like the outdoorsman talent. Wild Empathy is literally animal empathy with no power modifier. Woodland Stride looks like a version of terrain adaptation for undergrowth with a nature power modifier. Trackless Step is tricky. There is a minor effect that is similar, the friendly undergrowth perk from Dungeon Fantasy XI power-ups. For the full effect, you'll have to use the abomination that I came up with by converting a skill to an advantage. I'll have my druidic abilities write-ups linked in, in the description. Resist Nature's Lure is just resistant to fey abilities plus 3 for 3 points. Venom immunity is immunity to poison with a nature power modifier. Wild Shape can be started up as an alternate form and may be taken as an alternative ability to your spellcasting advantage. Or you can just use a shape-shifting spell to accomplish the same thing. Alternate forms are always tricky in GURPS, especially when you have to remove the mental disadvantages from the animal form. A Thousand Faces is just elastic skin with a nature power modifier. Timeless Body is just an aging with a nature power modifier. The Pathfinder Druid also has a capstone ability called Home Ground. This one is very expensive and can be built via Clear Sentience with Area Perception. The write-up is linked in the description. I also will link a 150-point Druid template in the description. If you take a look at it, you might notice many social traits. I believe that people often miss out on a lot of role-playing opportunities by forgetting that druids usually are not really hermits, but are quite social spellcasters. Usually they are part of a druidic circle, so a druid might have rank, contacts, claim to hospitality, patron, allies or other social traits. And I think that's all for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.